A very hearty good morning to all our attendees who have joined us for the very first virtual summit of ours and welcome to the very first panel of today's Tech and Innovation Summit. After a great keynote by one of the most successful SaaS unicorn, we are out here discussing the other side of the table, which is the investment part. We're going to discuss all the money matters right here. And to throw more light on this, I have with me two prominent investors in the tech space who will be sharing the stage and tell us more about what do SaaS investors look for in companies. Let me welcome on stage Mr. Rajesh Raju, Managing Director, Kalari Capital, and Mr. Sashank Rande, Founder VC, 100x.vc. Gentlemen, welcome to our virtual stage. I'm your session lead, Punita Kapoor, Deputy Editor, Entrepreneur India. So before we start discussing the next big leap for SaaS, I would suggest uh, both of you to first share with us more about your fund and some of your tech investments, specifically in the SaaS space. Rajesh, if you could share. Punita, uh, you want me to go? Yeah, so I'll, I'll share my, my, my thought about the SaaS and, and uh, uh, I'll name a couple of companies we can we can go into more detail about uh, these companies uh, sure. uh, soon. Um, so so uh, uh, as, as you can imagine, um, uh, with, with all the interest in SaaS, uh, both from entrepreneurs and investors over the last uh, few years, uh, there, there, there has been uh, a significant shift um, and, and there, there's been a kind of an inflection point over the last two years, uh, uh, primarily because enterprise tech in general, uh, we have, we've all dabbled in enterprise tech uh, for at least 14 years that I can remember in India. And, and uh, with, with uh, largely disappointing results, uh, primarily because we had to uh, 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 invest into companies uh, which did not have much uh, uh, domestic market and uh, our dependency was very high on uh, global markets, primarily U.S. markets. And oh. enterprise tech uh, traditionally has been uh, kind of a on the ground uh, kind of a uh, uh, technology uh, space where uh, uh, most of the U.S. companies thrived because they had large local markets. Uh, of course, they had the tech talent, uh, but they had the uh, large uh, local markets where sales um, uh, support implementation, everything was on the ground. And, and uh, that, that, that made it very, very difficult for uh, young companies uh, out of India or anywhere else uh, to go and compete uh, uh, with on the ground teams in the US. Uh, but, but, but fortunately with, uh, with SaaS uh, evolving uh, as, a, as a major force uh, in, the, in the enterprise uh, tech space, uh, it, it has democratized uh, the, the entire uh, uh, enterprise tech, right? So now, uh, the, the, the large markets and, and the companies don't have to be in the same geography. Uh, and and uh, the biggest change it has brought upon is it has made uh, uh, software uh, just not the domain of um, large enterprises. And, and uh, that's the uh, biggest uh, shift in democratization of software. And uh, now medium to small uh, business can afford uh, uh, software uh, primarily because of SaaS. And and uh, but, uh, it, it boils down to affordability, implementation timeframes, uh, support. All these things uh, have have fallen to uh, uh, not only the prices, uh, but but the, the effort needed uh, to do these things is relatively uh, low uh, in the SaaS model. And and uh, the, the 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 biggest change has been uh, you can you can be a startup or a company anywhere around the globe. You can you can be anywhere and and uh, go after markets, um, uh, Western markets or uh, Asian markets doesn't really matter. So that 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 has helped uh, uh, dramatically uh, companies out of India. And one of the shift we have seen over the last two three years is uh, Indian domestic markets are getting better or deeper. Sure. And primarily, the shift was driven by the, the, the startups, which have grown to a sizable size in India, uh, experimenting with uh, uh, SaaS technologies themselves and, and uh, uh, buying off-the-shelf software, which is uh, relatively uh, a difficult sale in India, now has become easier. And now even the larger enterprises in India are uh, experimenting with uh, uh, enterprise tech and, and more and more uh, SaaS technology. So... There has been a fundamental shift, and, and, and I think uh, SaaS is a great opportunity, a great equalizer for all entrepreneurs sitting anywhere around the globe. And, and India has uh, definitely a great advantage. Uh, we still have the labor arbitrage uh, advantage. Uh, we still can build the products cheaper. Uh, we have a great talent pool here. 
uh, every large tech mnc uh, product company around the globe has has had uh, uh, development centers in uh, uh, india for nearly two decades now so we have great amount of talent uh, trained talent uh, and and now the capital is available the local markets are getting better and and i, I think uh, we can get our products uh, to a maturity stage locally uh, uh within india and then uh, take them globally uh, uh when they when they get to get to a little bit of uh, product maturity so overall i, I think it's a great time uh, to be a saas entrepreneur and a saas in, uh, investor today and and we have had uh, i think uh, over the last uh, uh, 14 years nearly uh, 30 or investments in uh, enterprise tech and over the last um, uh two funds the, the last 7 to 8 years we have had nearly uh, 10 companies uh, uh which are in the saas space uh currently we have companies like uh, hiver uh, which is a collaborative uh, uh, email inbox solution uh, built around g suite uh, we have a company called shopalist uh, which is uh, doing extremely well uh, not only in india but globally it works with uh, uh, some of the biggest uh, global brands uh, it's in the marketing uh, tech uh, space um uh, we have companies like um, uh, edge networks uh, which which uh, has a saas solution for uh, uh, primarily enterprises uh, uh, around uh, talent uh, acquisition and talent management uh, within large organizations uh, and and we we have a long list of companies but i'll, I'll leave uh, uh, leave it there for now and and i let uh, shashank share his thoughts sure shashank rajesh thank you parita Uh, we are a fed young uh, fund uh, 100x.vc was started in july of 2019 uh, with the core objective of investing in early stage companies and uh, minimal viable product traction um, we are backed by uh, sanjay uh, mehta family office which is sanjay mehta my founding partner uh, founder and partner at 100x.vc who's been a very very active um, uh, investor in the ecosystem and uh, so last day we understood the challenge of raising seed capital and obviously we we set up this fund to uh, invest uh, you know uh, in 100 companies a year and uh, we've done 20 so far and we've had a, uh, a sizable chunk of companies in deep tech and b2b uh, particularly in saas um, and what we've been observing is that uh, while situation has been a little tricky over the last 75 and 80 days it's been a humbling experience for a lot of us uh, but never ever have we seen some segments uh, accelerate uh, so quickly and um, you know and adding to rajesh's point you know i think saas has been there for quite some time i think the whole compounding power of uh, you know uh, has been building for the last 20 odd years you know and um, and, and you know Uh, we are seeing some of the most promising companies in few emerging categories uh, you know privacy debt will end up becoming a new technical debt you know we will see a lot of b2b transactions uh, moving online the whole api universe will be uh, you know trying a lot of innovation across industries um, and we we are so to speak now entering the age of you know automation at scale Uh, so within this purview i think you know we set out as a fund to invest in very early stage companies we did 20 investments uh, through an instrument called isafe which is india safe uh, sim agreement for future equity and all our investments are done through this process where we try and expedite the uh, fundraising seed capital raising uh, very quickly and um, uh, the first set of investments were promising and uh, particularly the saas portfolio of 100x has been doing exceptionally well Uh, and i like to kind of highlight two companies one is norish which is uh, an education technology saas company enabling uh, digital and financial inclusion for millions of teachers trainers um, and institutions who don't have access to tech and design teams uh, to build their entire infrastructure uh, for online education delivery and more than ever now uh, you know the requirement for such an offering is very very high uh, so uh, so the, the promise for the india story becoming stronger in the on the saas side uh, uh is you know i'm particularly very optimistic about it norish did end up raising um uh, its pre series around just two weeks ago uh, during the covid situation and it's, it's a very promising uh, field and space which we are excited about the other one i would quickly like to highlight and then we can get into specifics over the 
course of our discussion uh, is a company called Data Sutra, uh, which has built an AI-based location management platform uh, that uses external data sources to help uh, businesses leverage location-based insight. So, you know, I mean, post-COVID, the need for uh, optimized resource planning, specific targeting has become very essential. So this company has been providing, uh, you know, has helped companies specifically in essential services like grocery, pharmacy chains, rapidly scale uh, their reach uh, and increase their market share. So uh, it's a great time uh, for the ecosystem. I feel uh, SaaS had had challenges uh, scaling up in India, as rightly pointed out by Rajesh. Uh, you know, we always we always had companies who were wanting for a larger pie of a client base from the U.S. market, which is still uh, the most active market uh, for a, from a business development perspective. But slow and steadily, I think we've reached a point where India is becoming a homegrown domestic market, um, and I, I I see a lot of activity happening over the next few years in India. These are my initial thoughts, but we can get into specifics as we go along. Sure. Thanks, uh, Radesh and Shashank. Uh, with this, let me ask both of you my very first question. So what are the success, success rates uh, you have seen with SaaS companies if we talk about India as a market? And are there any specific causes of failure which you see and you can guide fellow startups who are attending the conference so that they can avoid them? So uh, should I go, uh, Nita? Sure. Okay. So I, I think uh, uh, SaaS is uh, uh, j just a model, uh, whether you want to call it uh, uh, an imp implementation model or a, or a uh, revenue or a business model, but, but largely enterprise tech uh, uh, has been uh, difficult for a couple of reasons that I mentioned earlier. Uh, one being the local markets, the domestic markets have, have been quite shallow for many, many years in India. So uh, getting your product to uh, maturity uh, was difficult in India before you can take it globally. You had to go globally very early on. And, and uh, that, uh, that, uh, that was uh, qu quite difficult for most companies, uh, young companies without much experience trying to establish a base uh, uh, in, in, a, in a place like U.S. Um, so, so the success rate, uh, I, I think uh, there, there are not that many successes as you can see over the last uh, 15 years uh, uh, in, in enterprise tech. There are a handful of companies. And, and uh, uh, any of the large names that you hear, uh, uh, like, like Freshworks, etc., uh, they, they've all uh, uh, followed a simple model, right? I mean, uh, uh, can, I, can I sell my product uh, or, or, or service uh, sitting in India and uh, uh, without uh, having to uh, build large sales teams in the U.S. or any other geography that I'm targeting? And, and can, I, can I support them remotely? And, and implementation has to be uh, pretty much a plug and play. You can't uh, have a service that's going to it. Uh, I think all those things kind of uh, uh, go well with the SaaS uh, business model as well, right? That's why SaaS uh, is is the is the new uh, uh, kid on the block, and 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 there's so much focus globally, and and of course in India primarily, right? So uh, the, the the success uh, I think is going to come from uh, for entrepreneurs to be able to. Uh, put a great product uh, out there, uh, which uh, uh, is almost plug and play, and and uh, one, uh, the the product can be uh, uh, implemented, supported, uh, and and uh, experienced, uh, trained, uh, tra training. Everything has to be remote, right? And uh, uh, when you're doing anything uh, virtually or remotely, uh, the, the and the the power uh, of the, of the product or the value proposition of the product is the simplicity. Right, and uh, it cannot be too complex. Uh, it has to be self-explanatory. And uh, uh, how do you bring uh, that, uh, that 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 simplicity into into your product is important. And uh, in India, we have struggled through that uh, over the last many years. But I see I see more and more companies uh, uh, understanding understanding that aspect when you're trying to uh, sell to global audiences uh, uh, sitting in India. Uh, selling has to be easier. Uh, implementation has to be easier and support has to be easier. And, and uh, uh, primarily focusing for young companies on SME is, is uh, better. Uh, enterprises still need that physical presence locally. Uh, they need to convince when you're trying to sell somebody a million dollars worth of uh, uh, technology 
it, it, it's uh, really done remotely. It's difficult to do it remotely. Uh, and and they expect a level of uh, uh, service and they expect uh, uh, on the ground service, which is also difficult for uh, Indian entrepreneurs to do. So I think primarily focusing on SME businesses for now. And as you go larger, like, like uh, for, for example, Freshworks is doing, then you can build uh, local uh, uh, sales teams uh, in, in US or Europe and elsewhere. Right. So sales and, and, and other services teams locally. But, but, but when you're a startup, I think uh, uh, keeping your product simple. Uh, 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 easy to uh, understand, learn, implement, uh, use uh, has to be uh, your 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 core principles in in building uh, and rolling out your product. And and uh, uh, I think most companies are slowly learning that, and and I'm seeing a great improvement in that uh, uh, in the space now. Sure. Uh, Shashank, you have any uh, guidelines which you can share with startups? Yeah, sure, Pranita. So, uh, you know, we work with very early stage startup. And, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's always, we've seen a lot of uh, B2C companies over the last few years. Obviously, the advent of Flipkart being as successful it is, uh, you know, a lot of businesses were cropping up in B2C because sheer strength and the sheer the effort required to, you know, to kickstart a B2B SaaS platform. And as Rajesh pointed out, you know, at, at an early stage at startup, you can't possibly go global. And that's where the largest sense of the market was. So uh, we weren't seeing that exponential growth in the B2B SaaS space over the last few years, uh, as we were seeing in other segments, right? And, and I feel that is changing now. Uh, and there are multiple factors to it. Uh, a, the very fact that it's a lot more easier to now be closing transactions virtually, that culture will set in a uh, uh, lot of organizations are now becoming cognizant of, you know, figuring out how they can not have a physical presence uh, in a large uh, outside their home country and still figure out how they can do business. But most critically, as a domestic market within India, and as Rajesh also mentioned, you know, SME and MSME segment is picking up. This whole COVID situation has compelled them, arm twisted them, jolted them, forced them to go digital and move beyond their WhatsApp. Uh, conversations and I think that is again it's too early uh, I'm just being very very optimistic uh, that space offers a lot of opportunity and I'll give you a few examples uh, within our portfolio there's a company called Finline which is uh, automa- it's created automated software for SMEs uh, and MSMEs who are applying for mudra loans now and there are a large number of companies uh, uh, in millions who who want to utilize this or rather who apply for mudra loans and can utilize this software because it's just an inherent six month process uh, of you know, pre, pre-application and you have to physically do it. Such small innovations, such small automations where you know smaller companies with simpler products as Rajesh mentioned, and I couldn't agree more with him. Simplicity of the product, the efficiency of the product and then catering to a segment which is now for the first time going digital and and are likely to be in that zone for the next 10 to 15 years. I think that in itself is a huge market. Uh, Are we going to be uh, pulling out SaaS, large SaaS success stories right now, like the way it's been going on in the US? Not now, because I think we are a different ecosystem. Our scale is different. But within that, there's a lot of opportunity. So so those are my thoughts. Uh, As I said, you know, I'm optimistic about this. And I think COVID only has accelerated this entire process uh, of compelling and pushing people to go digital, and they've been rewiring their uh, working uh, processes and how they can make it more efficient through these tools. And I think it's a great time for early stage entrepreneurs to cater to this segment. Sure. sure. So Rajesh, taking a cue from what you said, so like we have seen the world has been the stage for SaaS startups, but in current times, how do you see these startups approaching the global markets? I think uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the current times, I'm assuming you're, you're referring to the, the COVID uh, crisis situation. Correct. And and, and uh, uh, COVID only makes, uh, uh, like Shashak pointed out, COVID only forces uh, uh, people to adopt uh, SaaS models more, uh, right? And and uh, 
uh, it, it accelerates the trend which has already been there. Uh, SaaS has been gaining traction and, and uh, it was accelerating. I, I think it's going to get further accelerated because of COVID. Uh, and and uh, most of the businesses, uh, whether it is SMEs or enterprises, are, are operating around the globe remotely. And one of the great things uh, I think uh, everybody realized uh, during this and the, the reason SaaS startups, uh, like Shashank was pointing out, are doing extremely well uh, through the crisis and um, hopefully post the crisis as well, uh, is because the nature of uh, SaaS is all remote anyway, right? So there was no interruption uh, within the SaaS uh, uh, providers and, and uh, there was no interruption in the service uh, that, that, uh, uh, that the enterprises were, uh, were using from the SaaS companies. So... Uh, uh, the, uh, as, uh, as you can imagine, the, the 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 cloud, the hosting, all these companies like AWS and everyone has been doing extremely well. I think now, now the companies have realized that um, having anything on uh, premises, even if you can afford it, and if you're a large enterprise, uh, you've done that for control, security, etc. Uh, in the past, now they're all uh, uh, taking a second look, saying, uh, I'm, "I'm sure security we can solve uh, through AWS and 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 uh, SaaS services." Uh, uh, but, but having on premises when you don't have teams to uh, to to really take care of uh, your servers etc uh, which can be a, a massive headache uh, especially through the crisis and i'm sure it, uh, this may continue uh, 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 even when the covid situation eases a little bit so i i, I think uh, uh, it's a, it's a uh, covid has been uh, uh, a great inflection point for saas uh, there was acceleration i think it's going to get only further accelerated uh, and and uh, now businesses uh, have to be uh, very, very price competitive. Uh, SMEs uh, dabbled uh, with SaaS before. Uh, some uh, some in the in the Western world have done it. Uh, but, but in India and elsewhere, I think uh, uh, more of the businesses, uh, small businesses are going to uh, look at this as a uh, as a way to automate things. Uh, uh, their, their workflows and and uh, improve efficiencies in their uh, in in their businesses. So uh, they, I, I think uh, more and more uh, uh, usage uh, has happened to, uh, through the COVID, and, and now hopefully uh, they have gotten used to uh, using the service uh, and, and using software. Maybe for the first time, some of some of these businesses, and and uh, so sometimes the the fear of unknown, right? And and uh, there is a great amount of fear about technology. That's been the biggest uh, stumbling block uh, in the SME world for uh, tech companies. Uh, they just just fear of unknown. I don't have uh, IT people, tech people within my company who will manage it, who will take care of it, who will support me. Uh, I, I, I don't know anything about technology and I want to use it, uh, but but uh, how will I use it? Uh, how, how do I get the kick started? Right? So I think the initial push is important. I think COVID has provided that initial push uh, to some companies, just like on the B2C side. People who have never bought anything online uh, have experienced that uh, online purchase for the first time. Uh, people who have not played online gaming, for example, have experienced for the first time during the COVID crisis. Uh, uh, kids who have never uh, have seen uh, online education, online tutorials, have experienced for the first time because now it is kind of mandatory. Schools are conducting online classes, right? So I, I think the initial fear uh, has been the stumbling block, and 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 I think a lot of that, uh, like other industries, SaaS also has benefited because people uh, are compelled to uh, uh, try it out for the first time. And, and, and I think it's a, it's a great inflection point because of that. Thanks, Rajesh. Shank, any thoughts you have on uh, how should startups approach the global markets given the current situation? So, I mean, depending on what the product uh, offering and solution is, I think uh, today uh, remotely working is a huge possibility and reaching out to a global market uh, and these are my thoughts you know uh, is is i think today is the right time uh, you know with larger companies like uh, tcs and uh, so many others who've announced that at least for the next two years 75 percent of their population would be working from home and these are all large companies who've been managing uh, accounts, uh, global accounts for quite some time. Yes, uh, they have had office locations outside, but you know the very fact that projects are going to be delivered, uh, executed, and while 75% of your organization is at home or not in office, I think th this is, again, adding to Rajesh's point, an inflection point for 
for companies to really think that there is no barrier to doing a global business. Again, very specific to what the product is, what the client's requirement is. But I think in terms of delivering, um, it should not be a challenge. I'll give you an example. Again, I come back to my portfolio company, Horish, which is an ed tech company. Uh, over the last 60 days, while they've been doing business in India, uh, sitting here in India, they've been working with four schools in the Middle East, uh, you know, UAE and Qatar. And all has been handled virtually in terms of uh, uh, the, the offering and also deploying the solution, uh, which in this situation and any of the SaaS business should not be a challenge. So the, I think the, the, the core objective is go out, try it uh, for the founders in terms of reaching out to global players. Sometimes you might not get through, but when you get through, uh, people are willing to experiment not only in India, outside as well. And, and it's again, it's a cost arbitrage, right? So if, if, there is an, if, if there is an availability where I can access a better solution, uh, which is cheaper, efficient, agile, and based out of India, even the clients are willing to kind of figure out how they can work with uh, such solutions outside their home countries because uh, everybody is trying to preserve cash. Uh, cash is king right now. So they are trying to figure out which are the vendors which are more efficient. Uh, and price sensitive to their kind of uh, entire balance sheet, and they can they, they they are open to kind of evaluating. So I think my answer is I think entrepreneurs should be going out all out, and I think uh, being home or not being home, not being able to go to a specific country, I think those parameters, those barriers can be crossed now and should be attempted. Some might work, some might not work, but no better time to give it a shot. Interesting. So. Uh so both of you, if you could share, I mean, how do we compare the first generation SaaS startups like Zoho, Freshworks and Druva with the second generation of SaaS startups? And do you think they can replicate the same success? Yes, Punita, uh, uh, I think uh, the, the, the second wave uh, have uh, uh, a few advantages uh, that that the first wave did not uh, they they had to struggle through uh, uh, various things uh, one uh, the maybe the talent itself uh, uh, second funding was a was a major roadblock because not many indian uh, uh, vcs believed that uh, enterprise tech a lot a large enterprise tech companies can be built so primarily the dollars were flowing into uh, uh, consumer side and, and uh, you've seen uh, some large uh, uh, consumer companies grow over the last 10 years, uh, but, but very few product companies, right? So uh, th th that has changed. So now, now the second wave uh, have uh, believers in, in uh, investors and uh, 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 th th there is enough uh, funding that is available. Uh, 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 if anything, over the last two years, we have seen uh, 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 you know, more than enough funding for SaaS companies. Uh, uh, I, I, I think it has crossed... Uh, 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 billion dollars in 2019. I think that, that was the highest ever. 2018 was a was a peak, and 2019 beat that by even 50 percent. So uh, there is enough funding available. The the first uh, wave did not uh, have that kind of support, and okay. now uh, uh, globally the the adoption rate uh, of SaaS has uh, 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 you know go, gone up uh, dramatically over the last four or five years, right? And uh, Salesforce. For example, uh, 15, 20 years ago, when they started, uh, struggled the first decade uh, uh, to uh, to preach uh, the the whole uh, SaaS advantages. Uh, but 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 now we don't you don't really have to educate the the buyer much uh, as uh, uh, you know Salesforce or even Freshworks and uh, Zoho all these guys had to do uh, uh, in uh, the ten years ago. But 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 now I, th I think there is an understanding of <clears throat> how it works. Uh, there, there, there is enough confidence that uh, uh, data security, uh, connectivity, uh, all these things, uh, which used to be problems for the first wave of uh, uh, SaaS players, they have they've been largely uh, resolved. And, and uh, uh, with AWS and cloud computing becoming uh, pretty much a standard, not just in SMEs, but also enterprises, uh, I, I, th I think uh, most of the roadblocks are, are taken away. Uh, the, the 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 question is how Indian startups can compete globally, right? And and uh, to your earlier question, and now for for Indian uh, entrepreneurs uh, out there uh, uh, listening to us today, yeah, you 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 need to go with uh, the confidence that <clears throat> if you have a good product, 
uh, if you have a good offering uh, in, 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 a, in a space uh, uh, that could be competitive, that may not be competitive, it could be a white space or may not be a white space, doesn't really matter. As long as you have a good offering, you can you know that you can build the product uh, uh, cheaper than anyone else uh, around the globe. Uh, you, we have the talent and, and we have the labor arbitrage. We can get great talent at one-fourth, one-fifth the cost of, uh, for example, U.S. and half the cost of, for example, what China can do. So, so we, we, ha- we still have that cost advantage intact. And we have the talent pool here. The, the other advantages that you need to uh, uh, really use and leverage is even though we are, we are, we are providing a, a SaaS uh, offering to the globe, nobody else, wh- whether it is U.S. or uh, uh, China or Europe, n- no other startup can provide the high-touch service we still can provide. So the advantage of, uh, even though it's remote, the advantage of being in India is that you can still put a human being in front uh, in front of a client or a phone call or a, or a zoom call doesn't really matter and support them in 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 the in the in the hour of need and and like i said most smes are afraid of technology and they may still need the high touch model so they may buy uh, your saas offering compared to uh, a us saas company uh, which may not be able to provide that uh, uh, high touch service this will be very low touch the, at best messaging would be the, the best form of uh, service they can provide or email or something, right? So they, they will not put a human being for an hour in front of you uh, to solve your problem or get, get you uh, through through uh, uh, whatever the learning curve or whatever you need. The Indian companies can still afford to do that and, and other countries cannot. Uh, and, and the other advantage we have is we have we can afford inside sales in, uh, uh, in India. Very expensive to do that in the US. Here, uh, Unlike other uh, SME-focused SaaS companies around the globe, it's all digital marketing and and uh, digital conversion, and and digital support. Everything has to be automated because they can't uh, really afford uh, uh, tech resources or tech sales resources. India can still do that. We can still have large inside sales teams sitting in India, and 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 you have the ability to convert customers uh, who, who are tutoring uh, whether to buy uh, your service or not. Uh, you can you can get on the phone. You can get on a Zoom call and convert them. So we have advantages in sales. We have advantages in support. We have advantages uh, uh, in the cost arbitrage in developing the product. Uh, we can put more resources. We can uh, get to market with new functionality quickly. So I, I think you need to go with the confidence that we have number of advantages that other ge- geographies don't. Sure. Thanks, Rajesh. Uh, Shashank. Uh- quick uh, perspective from you before we open the floor for questions from audience. Yes, I, Rajesh has quite uh, efficiently covered all the points. I think I, I love the idea and the, the point on the inside sales. I couldn't agree more. Uh, to adding to that, I think uh, the whole ecosystem has evolved. Uh, yeah, in 2009, 2010, we saw large private equity funds and venture capital funds uh, uh, you know, set up shop over here and most of them buy folks who had worked in the U.S. and now are moving back to India. And, and those models, they have seen certain models and they experimented with that. And I think that's where we saw the first wave. But as rightly pointed out by Rajesh, I think over the last 10 years, the availability of super data, um, penetration of, you know, connectivity in tier 2, tier 3, has just really evolved the whole uh, landscape. And... Uh, it gives us the ability to kind of now look at, uh, you know, catering to this audience um, and, and then developing solutions, uh, products, which are more efficient, simple, uh, and then are catering to the specific requirements of this particular audience. So today now we have uh, a, a, an audience which is willing to uh, experiment, which is willing to try out new things because they've been exposed to some level of connectivity. They understand. The first time, you know, I think Zoom's sessions or Zoom's uh, interactivity increased uh, phenomenally and I think multifold over the last 75 days, uh, wherein, you know, I, I saw my my parents using it for the first time. I've never seen them use it. So even folks who have not been used to technology are now getting accustomed to it. Uh, and, uh, and we are going to see uh, a different wave of companies coming out over the next 10 years uh, because the challenges have been reduced. The access to seed capital, venture capital has increased. Uh, incubation centers have increased. The whole ecosystem has evolved. So, so promising times ahead. 
Sure. On this note, I'll just uh, ask you some questions from our audience. Our first question is from Neha Bharti, who's asking, will Indian young startups continue to attract large investments from various funds despite changing government policies, especially with reference to Chinese investors? Uh, I, I, I think the, the space itself. Uh, Rita, uh, can I take that question? Sure. Yeah. So the, 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 the space itself has been attracting uh, uh, investments at record levels over the last couple of years. Uh, 2020 shouldn't, shouldn't be any different. Although investors do get cautious when there is a, a health or an economic crisis like we're facing today. Uh, but but SaaS uh, uh, pace of uh, investment should not change. It, at least uh, uh, that's my gut feel at this point. And and, and uh, the the point about the Chinese investors, uh, uh, yes, the, that's a gray area for for now. Um, I think there needs to be more clarity on uh, 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 what 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 are the what what are some of the criteria that that uh, that one needs to worry about when taking investments uh, uh, from China or uh, Chinese-linked uh, uh, individuals or funds. Uh, the, the, we, we are struggling with uh, the clarity as well. In few of our companies, uh, there is interest, but but uh, we, we don't know exactly uh, uh, how we should proceed. Uh, but hopefully, that's temporary in nature. Uh, unfortunately, it comes at a, a wrong time when Chinese investors uh, have uh, started uh, uh, accelerating their uh, investments into India over the last couple of years. Um, so, so we will see what happens there. But, but uh, anyway, SaaS has not uh, been a domain of uh, Chinese uh, investments or investors uh, uh, primarily. Uh, it's been uh, uh, either the local funds like us uh, or uh, the Western funds, which have taken a lot more interest in uh, SaaS uh, than Chinese have. Uh, Chinese have been primarily focused on the consumer market of India. Uh, so uh, it shouldn't make uh, much of a difference for the SaaS space. Uh, but but still, it's it's a gray area and a question mark which needs to be uh, uh, clarified by the government. So, sure. The next question we have from uh, Sanjay Togaria, uh, Shashank. I think you can answer this since you've invested in one of the ad tech uh, startups. Uh, the question is: We have product online exam software as SaaS. How to explore or attract new market, local and global? Sorry, I can you repeat the question again. Uh, the question is, we have product online exam software as SaaS. How to explore or attract new market for local and global? I think uh, uh, there are a few players in the market who've been uh, providing the same solution, broadly speaking, as I understand. But I think if you've got a port within that solution and there's a more differentiation, uh, I think starting within the uh, you know online academia or physical academia, which have been... Uh, trying to, uh, you know, uh, create better and efficient softwares or utilize better and efficient softwares right now to engage with their students. Uh, I think that's one way of going about it. Um, you know, how 100x looks at this uh, is that, you know, we when we are looking at opportunity, we're looking at founders' backgrounds and, and, and particularly the total addressable market within that space and how the founders have built out the product uh, and, and their moat comes out. Now, Space which you're addressing has a lot of players right now. What would be really, really interesting is that uh, how quickly can you onboard a client when you pitch the product and how efficient and differentiated your offering is compared to the other players. I think that's one way. Once you get the local piece done, similarly, the same principles apply to the global platform or global set of clients. Sure. Another question we have is from Kanish. Kanakia, who's asking, do you believe early stage investments into startups are insular to the economic slowdown? I'll, I can address that. So, you know, it really depends uh, what kind of investment firm you're running. Uh, so, you know, uh, there are growth stage VC funds who are also typically doing follow on rounds in companies. Uh, and, and, you know, they, they might take a backseat in doing fresh investments uh, because they want to manage their portfolio companies and or maybe still continue to look at uh, newer companies. Uh, at you know, at, at our level, we are a seed stage fund, typically investing up to 160 USD, and and we want to invest in 100 companies a year. And at our stage, we are not doing follow-on funding, so uh, we've got the corpus ready, and we are ready to deploy. So 
uh, irrespective of whatever the situation is, we will continue to invest at our level because uh, we we are, so to speak, feeders uh, to the growth state VC funds like uh, Kalari Capital and the, and the other ones in the market. So at a seed level, it should not stop because if you're a, if you're an investor or, or a, you know, a small ticket size investor on the sidelines and you've not been active, then yes, you might not uh, look at it. But uh, for funds at seed level, I think this you, you need to continue to invest. We need to continue to deploy, um, and, and then and then let it take its own course. Okay, sure. So next question is from Rohan Joshi. Uh, he's asking, how do I market my product differently to B two B and B two C companies? What are the key differentiators that play a role here? Rajesh, you want to add to it? Yes, I, I'm assuming uh, uh, he is referring to uh, a SaaS uh, uh, platform of his, and and uh, right. then customers are being uh, uh, either consumer companies or um, uh, other other product B two B companies, right? So, I I, I don't think um, uh, if if it's a if it's a service that is needed by whether B two B B two C doesn't really matter. Um, uh, it's it's uh, uh, the, the 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 reaching those companies. Uh, Maybe through different channels, and and uh, uh, the 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 channel strategy may be maybe slightly different, but but I, I don't see fundamentally B two C versus B two B customers uh, being different. Uh, one thing is B two B companies uh, tend to be uh, uh, more uh, stable and a uh, little bit more predictable cash flows. Uh, and and uh, B2C uh, uh, tend to be, uh, uh, you know, very much un, un, uh, unless they're uh, old uh, time, um, uh, old school companies uh, which are profitable and have been around for, uh, for a number of years, they, 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 they tend to burn a lot of money. And, and uh, it may depend on whether they have cash or not, whether they have new funding or not. So your marketing uh, may have to be a little bit more nuanced. Uh, but, but, but fundamentally, the, the service itself... Uh, uh, that, that doesn't have to be marketed differently to uh, both of them. Uh, you, you, you have to look at geographically and, and, and vertical market, uh, segmenting them properly, and what channels, whether digital channels or offline, offline channels are the best way to reach customers. Uh, the, the, those strategies uh, have to be worked out, but uh, you don't have to worry about uh, the, the end customer being B2B or B2C much. Sure. With this, we'll just take one last question before we conclude. Uh, the question is from Kanish Kanakia, who is asking, what are your views on marketing automation SaaS for SMEs in India? And do you think such companies would take a hit due to cuts on short-term marketing budgets, among other controllable expenses due to economic slowdown? Let me let, let me start with and then Shashank can end with. Uh, so so m m marketing art automation has been around for a long time, and it's a, it's a very, very competitive space with uh, uh, dozens and dozens of uh, small and large companies in the U.S. already. Uh, and, and I've seen a bunch of companies in India as well. Uh, it's a tough space to begin with uh, because it's competitive. So you have you need to have uh, uh, a world class product to compete against uh, uh, the existing uh, uh, companies out there. Uh, but, but but coming to the the spending uh, uh, per se, yes, marketing uh, uh, is one of the first things that uh, that gets cut uh, when there's an economic crisis, um, and and uh, uh, that's a concern uh, on, on the on the on the companies which are uh, uh, trying to make. Uh, Money from the marketing uh, groups' budgets of companies, right? So, uh, the, 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 that's definitely a concern. Uh, having said that, we we have had um, uh, uh, a few of our companies which 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 depend on uh, uh, marketing budgets, etc. And those companies have seen some difficulty, but not not uh, any dramatic change uh, in the, the way the customers are behaving, especially uh -huh. if you're focusing on, if you have a marketing budget and your digital marketing budget, for example, was uh, X percent, uh, your marketing budget may shrink, but your digital marketing budget may actually increase uh, with, with, the, with the world uh, getting more and more digital. The trend was there, but COVID actually helped uh, the digital trend accelerate further. So your, the, 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 the digital marketing 
uh, side may not uh, see a massive uh, change. Uh, that's a hope. And, and at least that's what we are expecting uh, for some of our companies. So uh, uh, hopefully, hopefully the, the, the budgets uh, uh, may not shrink as much. But even if they shrink this year, uh, we, we are confident that uh, starting next, next fiscal year, uh, uh, I, I think on the, on the digital side, uh, marketing budgets will uh, only further accelerate. Sure. So with this, uh, we would like both of you to conclude uh, with one parting note, uh, which would be on why would you bet your dollar on SaaS in India? Shang, you want to go first? Yeah. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Rajesh. Um, as I said, you know, our fund thesis is to back Indian startups uh, at the seeds uh, level. We work extensively with um, uh, incubation centers and accelerators to identify these opportunities very early on um, and very sector agnostic in our approach. Um, and hence, you know, uh, you know we as a thesis, you know, we're very optimistic and sector agnostic and uh, we've been working in large corporates and uh, uh, we've been seeing the requirement for such B2B companies. So, uh, as I said, during the course of our discussion, you know, 100X is looking at backing uh, B2B uh, SaaS cloud infrastructure startups uh, across categories. Uh, we are looking at, we might not look at certain spaces like travel tech right now due to COVID, but I think largely we are open. And uh, I think this is a great time for entrepreneurs to really, really evolve and work towards building out a very, very sustainable uh, offering. A uh, lot of sectors have been affected, a lot of gaps have been created, um, and a lot of gaps need to be addressed. Uh, for the first time in years, which we were used to doing archaic processes or following archaic process, those have been completely broken down. While we might see it as a problem right now, uh, there's a huge opportunity in that. So, uh, as I said, excited about supporting the early stage ecosystem across sectors. Uh, we are uh, completely accessible and approachable on our website. So, I'm looking forward to it, and 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 we are looking to back. Uh, at least, you know, 40 to 50 percent of our portfolio should be coming out of, you know, the B2B SaaS segment. Uh, and, and that's what we're pushing for this year as well. Great. Great. Rajesh. Rajesh. So coming to uh, uh, Kalari uh, over the last four years in the, in the current fund that we're investing from, uh, we have significantly increased our exposure to SaaS uh, compared to the prior two funds. And, and uh, I, I don't see uh, why that should change. If anything, I think uh, the, the, the percentage of companies uh, uh, which are focusing on uh, SaaS or product or enterprise tech uh, w would only go up for us. So in, in, ter in terms of uh, our confidence in the markets, uh, the SaaS market has, uh, has been uh, high for the last four years. And, and, and uh, uh, now we feel uh, we made the right call. Uh, taking that uh, four years ago. Uh, and, and I think for the entrepreneurs out there, my parting note is uh, uh, you, you are uh, uh, blessed uh, with, a, with the timing right now. Uh, and and uh, like I mentioned earlier, the first uh, generation of SaaS companies struggled. Uh, the, 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 the current generation of SaaS entrepreneurs and companies uh, should uh, go with uh, a great uh, amount of confidence into the markets. Uh, whether whether it's, it's building uh, uh, great products, uh, cheaper, faster, better, we have that uh, ability now. Uh, you have the ability to uh, get uh, angel funding, to seed funding, to uh, uh, an institutional VC funding like ours. Uh, I would say magnitude-wise, at least four x, five x better now compared to four or five years ago. Uh, so you 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 have the ability to raise uh, capital now, and uh, like I said, uh, uh, as a, as a SaaS platform. Uh, uh, compared to other global uh, competition that you have, uh, you can uh, uh, build faster, better, uh, cheaper uh, uh, products, and uh, you can support those products uh, uh, better than anybody around the globe. Uh, you can sell those products and uh, have better conversion rates uh, relative to anybody else because you can afford uh, uh, the inside salespeople that other geog geographies cannot. So you have all the advantages, whether it's building, uh, supporting, uh, and selling. So uh, 
I, th- I, th- I think it's a it's a great time to be a SaaS entrepreneur, and and uh, uh, I would uh, uh, I would really encourage uh, people who are looking at it or already in the game uh, to, uh, uh, to 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 really uh, 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 go wholeheartedly into this. And good luck to all the entrepreneurs out there. Thank you, gentlemen, for such great insights. With this discussion, we could rightly conclude that we are all well placed to give India a much larger share of the global SaaS pie. Thank you. And we'll conclude the session here. Our attendees can join us for our next session.